السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ اشد اللہ اللہ وادہ لا شریک اللہ و شد و نہ محمد ابد و رسول امباد فعوز بلّہ من شیطان رجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وما ارسلناك لا الا رحمت للعالمين and we have not sent thee but as a mercy for all mankind that is for all humanity holy quran surah al anbiya chapter 21 verse 108 and Verily, you have in the Prophet of Allah an excellent model for him who hopes to meet Allah in the last day and who remembers Allah much. The Holy Quran, Surah Al-Azab, chapter 33, verse 22. Respected Chairman Khalid Sefullah Sahib, respected missionary in charge canada respected missionaries distinguished guests brothers sisters and our dear children assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh i'm indeed most privileged and humbled to be in your presence this afternoon on the blessed occasion of our 31st jalsa salaan australia 2015 my speech is titled the holy prophet peace be upon him a mercy to all mankind any presentation involving our beloved holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a great blessing for everyone involved all those who noted his life in minute detail those who passed on the traditions as well as to the presenter and the listeners Just a salana, which is a holy occasion given to mankind by divine decree through the promised Messiah on whom be peace, is also following on from the great legacy laid down by our most outstanding master and messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His entire life was dedicated to the service of mankind and to ensure that this legacy continues. till the last day he laid the basis for leading an exemplary life and thus create a compassionate and excellent mindset which is forever in the service of Allah and mankind this brief presentation is focused on how he displayed the character of mercy and to remind us once again of his great contribution to all mankind and for all of us present here to be consciously following his excellent example by imbibing his character being a dynamic world which is constantly changing the basic foundations of our character to be need to be in harmony with divinity so that our character reflects mercy in all its forms and i quote surely a messenger has come unto you from among yourselves grievous to him is it that you should fall into trouble he is ardently desirous of your welfare and to the believers he is specially compassionate and merciful the holy quran al-tawbah chapter 9 verse 128 hazrat mirza bashiruddin mahmud ahmed hazrat khalif al-masih the second razi anhu commented on this verse as follows This verse embodies five great qualities of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Firstly, Allah speaks to him as an apostle. Secondly, as an apostle who has been raised from amongst ourselves. Thirdly, as one for whom it is hard to bear the pain of others. Fourthly, as one who is supremely anxious for the welfare of human beings. And fifthly, as one who is compassionate and merciful to those who accept his teachings and then 
Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmed, Kriftul Masih the third, Rahimullah, has further explained in his commentary of this verse, and I quote, to the non-believers, it seems to say, it grieves the Prophet to see you fall into trouble. That is, although you subject him to all manner of persecution and privation, yet his heart is so full of the milk of human kindness that no amount of persecution on your part can make him bitter against you and make him wish you ill. He is so kind and sympathetic to you that he cannot bear to see you turn away from the path of righteousness and thus put yourselves into trouble. To believers it says, the Prophet وسلم, is full of love, compassion, and mercy for you. That is, he cheerfully shares with you your sorrows and afflictions. Moreover, like an affectionate father, he treats you with extreme kindness and mercy. We must remember that this great, great gift to mankind is from our beloved Creator, Allah Ta'ala, for the good of mankind till the end of time as we know it. It is essential that we understand the word mercy or rahim, as this is a critical word in the Holy Quran and oft repeated. It is defined in the English dictionary as compassionate, kind, forgiving, thankful, giving blessings, tolerant, forbearing, lenient, giver of charity, giving clemency, gentleness, alleviation of distress, and providing relief. This goes to show that mercy encompasses so many other high moral attributes. It is not only in showing these traits in our characters, but also in creating these characteristics in all mankind. Even if one is the victim of atrocities, yet the individual shows mercy to the perpetrators as one of the greatest signs that a person is indeed the embodiment of mercy. This is where vengeance and negative traits has no place. The ahadiths of the traditions of the Holy Prophet وسلم, are filled with incidents of great mercy. We must also understand that the main objective of human existence is to win the pleasure of Allah the Exalted and constantly rise in spiritual status. The path to achieve this is total obedience to Allah and to follow the example of his holy prophet and messenger, Muhammad Our beloved Prophet Muhammad has aptly said, and I quote, it is easy to understand that the object of man's life should be to become the beloved of God Almighty. Until a man becomes so, he has not succeeded in life. But this object is not attained until you obey the Holy Prophet truly from your heart. The Holy Prophet has shown by his conduct the real significance of Islam. So follow that Islam if you want to become the beloved of God. Al-Hakam, January the 24th, 1901. History has borne testimony to the multifaceted life of the beloved Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah who went through the severest of trials throughout his life and raised him to a level which will remain unsurpassed. He was born in Mecca and early in life was orphaned and brought up by his grandfather and following his demise, his uncle. From the beginning, he had a persona of good conduct and righteousness. That is why he was referred to as Al-Amin, that is the trustworthy. His name, Muhammad itself, meant one worthy of praise, and he led an extremely full life in simplicity, humbleness, and service. He had not received formal education, and was referred to as an ummi, or the unlettered one. Yet, he rose to the level of a man unequaled in knowledge of the known and unknown in multiple spiritual realms in entire creation, and there will never be one like him. His life was so, so closely observed and not documented as in his character 
was reflected the Holy Quran. And this is what Allah the Exalted expects mankind to follow in order to achieve true salvation and nearness to him. We must also note that the teachings given to mankind is all encompassing for as long as humans exist in the physical form. At any one time, there will always be fellow humans who will be economically in the so-called needy and poor category of society, just as there will be those who will be very rich and many in the medical middle category. Irrespective of the circumstances of the needy and the poor, it is and will be incumbent on those who are economically in better circumstances to assist those who need help. This ensures the fair distribution of wealth and heartfelt care of the less fortunate in this world. Let us not forget the transient nature of this physical world. The time spent here is so little that it is likened to the blink of an eye. Allah the Exalted has said that your reckoning of time is different to mine. About a thousand years of your time is equivalent to a day in mine. It is noted that at the time of death, and the angel will ask as to how long have you tarried on earth, and the answer will be maybe a few days, whereas an entire lifetime of maybe 80 to 100 long years has passed. The reason I've brought this up is to highlight the importance that we have little time in this physical form. Therefore, all the moments we have of the remaining life is to be devoted in service to all mankind and constantly showing care and compassion. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu concern for the welfare of the poor and needy was from his early years. When he was a young man, some of his contemporaries got together to form an association called Hilful Fazl, which was set up to protect the rights of the poor. Hazrat Abu Uraira Razi Al-Anhu relates that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said, a poor one is not one who can be turned away with a date or two or a morsel or two. The truly poor one is he who does not find enough to suffice him, does not disclose his poverty so that he may be given alms, and does not stand up to ask Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. This goes to illustrate that we as Ahmadi Muslims need to be vigilant to try and identify these people who are genuinely in need of help and provide them the assistance they need. This has to be through a genuine desire for the welfare of our less fortunate brothers and sisters. Abu Darda relates that he heard the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, say, look for me among the weak ones, for you are helped and provided for on account of the weak ones among you, Abu Dawud. Another group of dear and beloved ones who are often subjected to persecution are girls, women, and children. Hazrat Anas Razi Anhu relates that the Holy Prophet وسلم, said, he who brings up two girls throughout the, their childhood will appear on the day of judgment attached to me like two fingers of a hand, say Muslim. At that time in Arabia, newborn girls were killed and often buried alive. A very sad and atrocious act which we find most heinous indeed. Sadly, in some countries, this is still in practice. Therefore, the safety and care of our daughters is paramount. It is therefore necessary that the true teachings reach these areas and our daughters find safety, love, and care. Abu Shurai followed Ibn Amr Kuzail relates that the Holy Prophet وسلم, said, by Allah, I declare sinful any failure to safeguard the rights of two weak ones, orphans and women, he said. On kindness towards women, Allah the Exalted has said, consort with them in kindness. Surah Al-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 20. Uh, Hazrat Abu Huraira Razil Anhu relates that the Holy Prophet وسلم, said, let no Muslim man entertain rancor against a Muslim woman should he dislike one quality in her, he would find another which is pleasing, Sahih Muslim. Each one of us should constantly look for these qualities that are pleasing to each other. It must be noted that no two individuals are the same, and more so between a man and a woman. Life is never what is called a plain sail. 
there will always be ups and downs. This is where we share and enjoy the good times and take the tough and testing times as an opportunity to learn to become a better person. What has to be nurtured between our wife and husband is love, tolerance, forbearance, and understanding and being a good example for our future generations. Constantly work towards making our homes a heavenly abode, and there is no better example than that set by our beloved Holy Prophet. May peace be upon him. Hazrat Abu Huraira again relates that the Holy Prophet said, the most perfect of believers in the matter of faith is he whose behavior is the best. And the best of you are those who behave best towards their wives. Tirmidhi. Hazrat Abu Huraira again relates that the Holy Prophet said, of the dinar, that is currency, you spend in the cause of Allah, the dinar you spend in procuring the freedom of slaves, the dinar you give away in charity to the poor, and the dinar you spend on your wife and children, the highest in respect of reward is the one you spend on your wife and children, say Muslim. These are essential guidance we need to constantly remind ourselves and nurture and develop and raise ourselves even higher in the sight of our beloved creator, Allah Ta'ala. One noted incident which has been recorded in history for all time and where the ultimate test of the Holy Prophet's character of mercy was illustrated was when he marched into Mecca at the head of an army as a victor. He was entering the city where he was severely persecuted. The people of Mecca would have been terrified as they were accountable for tremendous atrocities towards the Holy Prophet and his companions. His companions, for example, Hazrat Bilal Razilanho was subjected to extremes of torture and he could have been vengeful. The very acme of mercy was evident that day. It was filled with compassion and forgiveness. It must be noted that the Holy Messenger in all his works was under the guidance of Allah the Exalted, and such was the day. That day, all was forgiven, and the, and the magnanimity of the great prophet of God to the people of Makkah has remained a testimony till the end of time of how true Muslims should behave despite great atrocities committed against them. This very day, we see in the news how a group of misled so-called Muslims have created havoc in the world, so much so that our beloved Huzur, Khalifat al Masih Rabe, Hazrat Mirza Masur Ahmed, may Allah be his guide, has drawn close attention in his Juma Qutbah of the 4th of December 2015 of the severely deteriorating global situation which seems to be at the brink of a third world war. There is need for mercy in all its forms which is the example set by our beloved Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Our answer should always be filled with mercy, encompassing all its attributes. It should always be love for all and hatred for none. This work of mercy to all mankind is an ongoing activity, and each one of us has a duty to mankind in this regard. We humbly pray that we study the life of our beloved Holy Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and imbibe his character so that we continue the spirit of true Islam and be counted amongst those who have been raised for the mercy and good of mankind. May Allah Ta'ala make it so. May he bless this Zalsa and all the participants and shower his blessings on all mankind. Guide to the truth those who have been misled. Grant solace and comfort to those who have lost loved ones and bring true world peace. Ameen. Wa akhri duana, alhamdulillah, alameen. All praise is to Allah, Lord of all the worlds. Jazakallah, Jazakallah.